So why do we still burn coal for energy anywhere as opposed to renewable energy sources like solar and wind and et cetera? Well, we have said for quite some time uh, that solar is just not quite cost effective yet. Well, that's one that's not true anymore in terms of having reached grid parity, but even like why would that be true? Well, we could build a coal plant f for less initial dollars and uh, get coal moving into it and generate more watts per dollar, a little bit more watts per dollar than a solar plant until recently. But in the process of doing so, the coal was releasing a huge amount of mercury into the atmosphere and water, so much so that the large fish species have mercury levels that are well beyond any previous safe levels. That then again are potent neurotoxins and you know biotoxins of, of all kinds. Uh, and putting uh, zinc oxide, nitrous oxide, sulfates into the atmosphere that are doing mountaintop removal mining to get the coal that are damaging the ecosystem in so many ways and damaging human health directly, right? Well, what's the cost of that if we actually had to fix it, if we accounted for it? If we looked at what is all of the harm that comes to humans from those environmental toxins, what is the total cost of the medical bills of that? And how do you even count the cost of lost life and cancer in children and et cetera? And then you said, well, let's say someone can burn coal, but they can't leave the commons, right? Which is that which affects everybody. The, the natural world. The commons is a, is a metaphor for everyone. Is that the common world, right? That which is common to all of us. So the natural commons is the natural world. The built, the built world commons is the, the built infrastructure that we all participate in. Um, but let's particularly focus on the natural world commons for a moment. So with the coal example, most of the cost, right, the actual negative, the cost of burning coal, the company doesn't have to pay for. It's externalized to the commons in the form of damaging ecosystems, extincting species, uh, externalizing medical bills to future generations. So everybody else pays for it, right? Yeah. Now their profit margin goes up because they move the cost somewhere else. That's called externalization. Well, if we said we can burn coal, but you can't leave the commons net worse. So the same amount of CO2 has to be in the atmosphere afterwards. So whatever it takes to scrub the CO2 out of the atmosphere, scrub the mercury out, uh, mine it in a way that is regenerative to the whole ecosystem, you have to use the technologies that do that. Well, the cost to do that would make coal something like four orders of magnitude more expensive, and solar would have reached grid parity the moment it was invented. And so it's a nonsense economic system that is actually an extinctionary economic system that not only allows but incentivizes externalization of harm to the commons that is what led to coal making sense over solar, right? And so many other uh, things like that. Similarly, we can, we can look at that, say we look at any species extinction issue that's been a result of destroying habitat or poaching or whatever. A whale swimming in the ocean is worth nothing on anyone's balance sheet economically. It's part of the natural world commons. We can think of it that way. It has its own balance sheet, right? It is a part of nature's balance sheet. We just don't measure those balance sheets and we don't care about them. And we don't care about them in any way that we have metrics associated with. But if there is a fishing boat that can do whaling, that whales a million dollars in whale meat in Japan or somewhere right where that's a, a part of the commodities trade. So that means that there's a million dollars of incentive to kill the whale and none to leave it where it is, which is why we have been extincting species at the radical rate that we have, cutting down old growth forests, overfishing the oceans, is because everything's worth something to us commoditized and dead and not otherwise. The, the commons, the balance sheet of the commons, we don't measure – and so we just steal from it, right? We externalize costs there and we take its assets. And the more we can take the assets of the commons and externalize our costs there, the better we're doing in capitalism. What would it look like for technology to measure this inventory for the commons so that everyone can win? How do we, how do we use tech to make a win-win when we look at the commons and inventorying all that? So the key thing that has to happen in, in the future of macroeconomics is that we have to Make sure that what we're incentivizing people and companies and countries, right, what we're incentivizing agents to do is omnipositive. So we're not giving anyone incentive, meaning they get ahead economically by doing something that is fundamentally harming other agents or harming the commons. Otherwise, we're continuing to cause the problems at the deepest level by incentivizing them based on what our accounting systems, right, based on our value systems. And so – what we need is to incentivize things in relationship to how omnipositive they are, which means you have to measure everything affected, not just a few of the things, but measure everything affected, internalize all of those positives and negatives, 
into the value equation and then incentivize things accordingly. So to the degree that we make ins incentive of any agent more close to perfectly aligned with the well-being of other agents in the commons is the degree to which the economic system becomes a source for solutions to everything rather than a source for problems to everything.